What's going on YouTube? Sway here bringing you guys another YouTube video and then today I want to talk about the first things that we're going to do when we get a new Samsung device. Now I have a Note 10 Plus here that I'm going to be doing this video on but I'm going to try to make this video as unbiased as possible so that even if you didn't have a Note 10 Plus, if you had like an S20 or if you have an S10, I'm going to try to keep this as universal as possible. Uh, if you guys would like a specific one for a Note 10, then let me know in the comments below and I'll make one for the Note 10. Now a lot of these features some of you guys may already know about, but there's also going to be some features and tips that I think are a little bit more advanced. So without further ado, let's get into it. And personally, I pick everything that is mandatory and I don't pick anything that's optional. I don't have my SIM card in my phone right now because I'm using it on my Galaxy Fold. So I'm going to speed up the process on this because nobody wants to see me setting up uh, my information. This is probably what you guys have your screen on right now, depending on what type of phone you have. Uh, but more or less, it's gonna look just basically just like this. And I'm gonna structure this video in that I'll try to make it as easy as possible to follow with me. So I'm just gonna go down the list of this whole of settings that we have here. Because at first, it can be a little bit overwhelming when you get a Samsung device because their phones are packed with so many features. And for the sake of the video, I'm gonna change one setting really quick. You don't have to do this. I'm gonna make my brightness the largest so that way you guys can see the phone a little bit easier. With that being said, let's get started. So connections, obviously we're not gonna really touch much on this. You basically just do whatever you want to do in here. Uh, get you connected on your Wi-Fi and all that. There's nothing that I really have to talk about there. Sound and vibrations, not really. You can customize your ringtones if you wanna do that. Um, there's really not much to do. Now display, this is a big one. Now Samsung makes some of the best displays on the market and there's definitely some tweaks that we have to do in here to take advantage of that and make it so that your phone gives you the best viewing experience that you can get on your device. The first thing I would do is to turn on dark mode. Now what dark mode does is it gives you this black interface where you know everything kind of gets customized, your notification bar, everything is black here. And this accomplishes a few things. First, I feel like this is more aesthetically pleasing than it was when it was like this. Uh, personally, I think it's easier on the eyes and I think it looks better. The second feature is that it conserves battery life. Why? Because these pixels are essentially turned off on your phone now. They're, they're no longer powered so that your phone is no longer using battery to power these displays. Henceforth, making your battery life a little bit better. Now, I personally, I always keep this on no matter if it's night or day. Speaking of night and day, if you're using your phone during the nighttime, I would definitely turn on blue light filter because it is a little bit easier on your eyes, but because I'm filming a video right now, I'm gonna leave that off. The next one I would change is screen mode. Uh, I personally, I would turn this to vivid. Now you can kind of see the difference between natural and vivid. Personally, I think the vivid looks a lot better because the images and video are just seem to pop a little bit more on the vivid. The next thing which is very important is screen resolution. Now, depending on which type of device you have, you might have a S10, you might have a Note 10, you might have a S20, uh, really depends on what phone you have, you're gonna see some different things here. Personally, in my opinion, if you paid this much for a phone for the best viewing experience, then you better use the best viewing experience. Now, your battery life may take a hit for this, but personally, I always leave it on the highest setting and my battery still gets me through a full day with no problems. I've never had any problems with the battery. Now, like I said before, this is going to be the first time where you have ver some varying differences here now. So if you have an S20, uh, you might have another few options down here with being the 60 hertz or 120 hertz refresh rate on your screen. You can kind of play around, you know, pick 60 hertz, kind of go through your interface a little bit, move around and see how you like it. Then change, go back, change to 120, see how you like it, see how smooth everything is, and kind of go off what you like. Uh, now the 120 hertz, I don't know yet, it will take a huge hit to the battery, but for, just do note that for 120 hertz refresh rate, you're locked on FHD+, and you're not able to use that while it's on WKHD. So kind of mess around with it. You do have some other options, unlike the rest of us who don't have that S20, you can go around and kind of play with the settings and see what you like and come back to the video. There's nothing much here. Home screen, if you want, you can go here and change your home screen layout. If you want more real estate, you can make it so that it's five by six and you, that way you can put more icons. If you want to put, fill it up, you want to put widgets, you can do all that. But for the sake of the video, I'm going to leave it the same for now. Now, personally, I do not use the edge panels here. So I'm just going to turn this off to save some RAM. Now, next thing is navigation bar. So the navigation bar is this down here. Depending on what phone you came from or how your personal preference is, you may or may not like the Samsung ones. 
So personally, what I like to do is I like to have the back on the left side and I have like the multitasking on the right side. And what also personally like is full screen gestures. Uh, this is more like iPhone where basically you have this little notch thing where you can kind of pull up. Now you can kind of play around with it, make the phone your own. That's the beauty of the Android. Personally, I like to swipe from the bottom because I know that my back button is here on the left and I know my multitasking is on the right so that I can just go up here and I know that, you know, my multitasking is here and I can always, middle is the home and, you know, back is swiping left. So personally, that's what I like. It's up to you guys what you guys like. The beauty of Android is that everybody can customize it to their own liking. Now, the next setting I would change is touch sensitivity. Uh, especially if you guys are using a screen protector, sometimes they'll mess with the sensitivity on the screen. So Samsung has this touch sensitivity feature. This is an especially helpful feature, especially if you're finding that your in-screen uh, fingerprint sensor isn't really very responsive or it's not reading your fingerprint right. You're getting a lot of false negatives. The only thing that I can recommend on that is scanning your finger twice. If you use your right thumb like me, go ahead and add another fingerprint. If you guys want to, you can add, you know, you, 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 I'm assuming you already did it once. You can do it again, add a second fingerprint, but use the same thumb and it will actually help you out a little bit more along with turning on touch sensitivity, especially if you're using a screen protector like I am. And that's gonna be it for the display here. Moving on, themes and wallpapers I'm not really gonna talk about. You can go in and change whatever wallpaper you want. Uh, themes, you can go to the theme store and download the themes if you want to, I'm not gonna go into that. Now, the next things I'll talk about is some of the lock screen. One thing I like to have, especially on the Samsung phones, is the always on display. Uh, I like to always show it. Basically what that does is when you turn off your phone, you're gonna have this little always on display here telling you, you know, the time, the day, and you can customize this and also your notifications. And you can always customize this as well. You can go around and pick what you like. You can change the color if you want to, but for the sake of the video and what I personally use, I just use this. And that's basically it for the lock screen. All right, so moving on here, we have biometrics and security. I didn't register my face or any fingerprints yet. A tip that I would give for your fingerprints, register your same fingerprint twice and it should help you out a little bit. Now, another cool feature that Samsung has is secure folder. It's basically like setting up a separate phone in the same phone. What I mean by that, it gets its own like phone app, messenger app. You cannot see anything on the side phone in the secure folder where you can't see who you're calling, you can't see who you're texting. You can add pictures in there that you can lock away. You can even side run, for example, like a separate instance of Instagram with a different account. I'll leave the uses for this feature to your imagination, but a lot of people can use it, for example, like their personal Instagram account on their main and then if they have like a side business entrepreneurship Instagram account they can put that on the other one. It's a very useful feature. The next folder I'm going to go through and I'm going to skip all this it would be advanced features. Now I'm not going to go into the S Pen stuff because like I said I'm going to try to make this as universal as possible but if you do have a Note 10 uh, you can go in there play with the S Pen features and kind of you know see what you like. Next thing I would change is the side key. So by default, the double press will quick launch the camera and that's pretty useful. I don't recommend changing that. I don't really change that. But if you want to, you can definitely customize this so that it opens another app if it is a little bit more convenient to you. But personally, I liked it on quick launch camera. The next thing I would definitely change is press and hold. By default, it wakes Bixby. Now Bixby is Samsung's assistant, which I think is crap, but that's my opinion. Some people might like it, in which case then you can leave it but most people think it's crap, so what I do is pick that to access the power off menu. By default, the power off menu is actually here. I don't know why they did that, it's a little bit weird, but I like it like this. Your power off button on your phone is still here if you wanted to do that. And because I hate Bixby so much, I also turn off Bixby routines. Now, going down the line here, one thing that I would change definitely is video enhancer because supposedly it enhances the image quality of your videos. Now you can also, if you click into it, you can see all the apps that are currently supported by it. I don't have that many apps installed yet, or I don't have any apps installed yet. These are what came pre-installed on the new device. But I'm sure if you added like Hulu or anything like that, it might pop up here as well. It's automatic, you don't have to do anything. Next thing going down the line here would be device care. This is where you can press and optimize now. But I'm not gonna talk about that right now. I'm gonna go into advanced and I wanna do uh, auto restart. Because every day when you use your phone throughout daily usage, your phone builds up a lot of stuff in the memory. And it doesn't really go away unless you restart your phone. What I like to do is, I like to turn on auto restart. And I like it so that maybe like Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at, I don't know, 3.45 a.m. I want it to auto restart itself. 
That way my phone is always feeling fresh and optimized. And also when you restart your phone at 3.45 a.m., you're not gonna really notice it because you're asleep. Now the next thing I wanna talk about is apps. I'm gonna go in this a little bit deeper later, but on Android, you do have the option to pick default apps so that you can, for example, change uh, what is the default camera, what is the default browser, what is the default Reddit client, and all that. Now, I'll give some of my app recommendations in the video later, but you're gonna see that most of my apps I use because of privacy, especially on Android, where I think privacy is a little bit more meh than iOS, so I like to use things that give me a little bit more privacy. Now, going to the home screen here, I want to talk about the icons up here. Now, this is kind of like your command center setting in a kind of way, but there's a lot of stuff that's not really useful here and that you won't really be using on a daily basis. So if you want, you can kind of customize it by going here. Now, a lot of this stuff, you don't really need to be in here. What is this fixy garbage? Take that out and focus mode. I don't need to focus. Tweak it to your liking. You might use like QR codes a lot or you might link to your windows a lot. Uh, so kind of play with it, do what you want to do. But one feature that you definitely should turn on is the Dolby Atmos. And it's kind of like a one time set it and forget it kind of a thing. Now some phones might not have it, your phone might not have it, but most of the newer phones that does have the Dolby Atmos feature, definitely turn it on, you're gonna hear a difference. Oh, and by the way, I got to that screen by holding onto the Dolby Atmos button. The next setting that you wanna change is, so you'll see that you don't have the brightness bar here, right when you pull down the notifications, it's gonna be down here. But I find that the brightness settings is something that I change the most often throughout the day. So I wanna make it a little bit more accessible. And how I do that is I do quick panel layout and I do show brightness on top. And now my brightness is right under my most used notifications which is very, very helpful. The next feature that I would definitely change is you see how your battery icon has no numeral so that you don't really know numerically how much battery you have left as a percentage. This could be, I don't know, 40, 50. I wanna know exactly how much I have. To do that, I would go here to the status bar and show battery percentage. What you can also play with in the settings here is you see the show notification icons. You can completely turn this off and you can see that all the notifications just went away. Next thing that you wanna do is you wanna to go to your camera and you wanna change the settings. Now, depending on what type of phone you have, again, this is gonna vary. My phone allows me to use video recording at UHD 60 FPS 3840 by 2160. And like I said before, I bought the phone for so much money I'm going to use all the features that come with the phone. And I'm also going to change the front resolution to the highest setting that I can also get as well. Now, this may vary for you. If you have the S20 Ultra, you might have the option of this, but you also might get an 8K option. Do note that the 8K option only records at 26 FPS or I think 28. You be the judge, you can use your own judgment and see which one you like better. Next thing I would change while you're in the camera settings is all the way down here, I would turn off shutter sound. It's just a personal preference to me. It sounds a little bit creepy every time I do press that camera button. Even when I'm taking a picture of like scenery or something, when I hear that click sound, that sort of makes me feel like I'm a stalker of some sort. That's it for the settings, guys. The next thing I wanna talk about is just some basic information about some app alternatives that you guys can use. If you guys want a more detailed video on what type of apps I use on my Android device, please let me know in the comments below because that is a video that I was planning on doing. I'm not gonna go into too much detail into why I use them. I'm just gonna go over some alternatives of what I use compared to these guys here. So for the default browser of choice, I use Firefox. And for the default password manager, I use Bitwarden. Now the common theme between these apps is that they're open sourced, they're more based on privacy, so I want to use these apps over other things. That's just personally to me, you might find that there are better alternatives for you. Now I'm not sponsored by any of these guys, this is not a sponsored video, none of my videos are sponsored. I use these based off my own opinion and I give them my personal recommendation because I find that they work well. I wouldn't recommend anything you guys that I personally wouldn't use myself. Speaking of that, the one drawback that comes with Samsung devices is that there, there are a lot of apps that come pre-installed with the Samsung devices that you just can't seem to get off. Like this is, this is bloatware. This is crap that I will never ever use. Like Bixby, no. And you're gonna find that you can't really disable it. You can't uninstall it. Like sure you can disable it, but it's not uninstalled. Now I'm a little bit OCD with this stuff. There are ways to get it off. You can like, I believe it's called like ADB. You can go into the command prompt on Windows, delete this stuff manually. I'm not gonna go into that video for the sake of saving time, 
But if you guys want a video like that, let me know in the comments. I will do something on that as well. Because personally, I uninstall most of this crap when I get a new Samsung phone. Now, one alternative you can use is Package Disabler Pro. It is not a free app, but I paid for it a while ago and I still have it, so I still use it. It's kind of a Samsung specific app that knows what Samsung phones have on their devices that are actually bloatware and you actually have the option to one click remove all the recommended bloatware on the phone based off what this app thinks is bloatware. Now you can use your own discretion and kind of go through whatever you want and disable it for example uh, what other features that you know you for sure will not be using and personally I hate Bixby with a passion so literally every single thing Thing I want out and there you go big speed is no longer on here big speed is no longer activated activatable even when I use wake big speed and I'm holding the power button and you can kind of play with it uh, like I said beauty of Android you can customize it you don't really have to worry about completely destroying your device because it's something like an easy unclick and that feature is activated again. Now I forgot to show you guys something. Now with one alternative way, if you hate Bixby as well and you want to turn off Bixby without paying for this app, you can actually do this. So I turned Bixby back on and uh, one alternative you can do is that you can actually go to, you press and hold on your home screen, go to your swipe left because that's where Bixby is and you're going to see that your Bixby home is turned on, you just turn it off. Alternatively, you can definitely also install a different launcher and it will just kind of be Google Home or whatever you want on this side. You already can just have it disabled as well. Oh, and I almost forgot one feature that you definitely must do. That's right, Samsung Pay. I almost forgot. This is such, such a great app and feature that Samsung devices have. It is amazing. Even when a merchant does not take mobile payments, boom, take out the Samsung Pay. Tap it on the terminal right next to the place where you swipe your card. Tap it like on the side or maybe on the top of it. Just do it, try it, it's gonna work. This is one of the biggest reasons why I use Samsung phones over like a Pixel or like a OnePlus or anything like that because Samsung Pay. Here in the US, we're really, really behind on our mobile payments. A lot of countries outside of the US, they're already way ahead of us in terms of mobile payments. A lot of the places don't take Apple Pay, that's normal. A lot of places don't take Google Pay, that's also normal. Samsung Pay is a godsend. Trust me when I say this, put your credit card in here, go out somewhere that doesn't take mobile payments, have that cash register tell you like, hey, we don't take mobile payments here. Tell them to shut up, put this on there, it works, do it. And when their eyes go wide, like how the hell did you just do that? Tell them like, Samsung, flex on them. You know, like flex on them. You can even get cash back while you're using the Samsung Pay as well. Like you can probably find some places that, uh, locally that are, you know, giving you some rewards for using Samsung Pay. Like, it's awesome. There's no re really reason why you can't use this. Like, you're getting rewards on top of your cashback rewards for your credit cards and all that. It's awesome. It's amazing. And that's basically it, guys. Now your phone is running at optimum settings. You're getting the most out of your device that you paid for. You know, with smartphones getting so expensive nowadays, pushing almost like the 2K mark, you want to get the most out of your phone because you paid for it. And you don't worry about battery life. There's always battery saving mode. Where the hell is it? Battery power mode. You can kind of turn off some of the stuff and it'll get you through the day. Charge your phone throughout the day if you have to. Use the phone on the optimum settings, guys. It's so much better. You paid for it, you deserve it, just do it. But the world is your oyster now. Go ahead and kind of play with some more settings if you want to. Go to the Play Store, download the stuff that you normally use, download your WhatsApp and get it running, and that's it. If you guys liked the video and thought it was helpful, definitely leave a like on the video down below. Tell me in the comments, it's good for the YouTube algorithm. And if you enjoy content like this, consider subscribing to my channel as I'll be bringing you guys more content like this in the future. And don't forget to hit that notification bell to notify you when I do. Thank you so much for watching the video till the end. I'm Soy here signing out and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.